As we prepare for worship, let us pray the Angelus. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived by the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mother, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to your word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour your grace into our hearts, O Lord, that we who have known the incarnation of your Son, Jesus Christ, announced by an angel to the Virgin Mary, may by his cross and passion be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Welcome to St John's Church in Princess Street in Edinburgh and welcome to my home. My name is Jeanette, and I am a member of this congregation. Today, we remember the story of the Annunciation, which is told by St. Luke, who used it to introduce some major things in his version of the Gospel. The angel Gabriel visited Mary, greeting her, as the one who is favoured by God to be the mother of Jesus, the Son of the Most High. It was not Mary's virtues or merits that won her for favour, it was simply that God remembered to be gracious and bestowed such a gift of power on Mary so that the whole human race might know the still greater gift of salvation. Thus empowered, Mary was able to respond, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. By the grace of God which filled her, she was able to practice a graciousness of her own towards God, for it gave her a unique freedom to make God's will the very thing that she herself willed. In this gracious response to God's gift, Mary may be seen as, as a forerunner of Christ himself, for her consent to God's saving purpose foreshadowed her son's consent to the fulfilment of that purpose, even at the cost of his own life. To the Annunciation, Mary responded, Be it unto me according to your word, in a similar way. On the eve of his passion, Jesus prayed to God, not my will, but yours be done. The Feast of the Annunciation, which celebrates the conception of Jesus, comes to full term on Good Friday, Holy Saturday and Easter, when we celebrate the birth of the new creation in his Paschal victory. All of God's grace is imparted to our lives so that we might share in this, this one mystery. Not all at once, 
but through the changes and chances of our daily living. The life of grace often leaves us puzzling, as the message of the angel puzzled Mary. And scripture suggests that Mary herself did not understand the mystery she had borne until her son was raised from the dead. Her whole life was a discipline in grace for the revelation of glory. And so it may be for all who by baptism and the Eucharist bear Christ in their own lives. Some words from Psalm 40. Great things are they that you have done, O Lord my God. How great your wonders and your plans for us. There is none who can be compared with you. Oh, that I could make them known and tell them but they are more than I can count. In sacrifice and offering, you take no pleasure. You have given me ears to hear you. Burnt offering and sin offering, you have not required. And so I said, behold, I come. In the role of the book, it is written concerning me. I love to do your will, O oh my God. Your law is deep in my heart. I proclaimed righteousness in the great congregation. Behold, I did not restrain my lips. Your law, and that, O oh Lord, you know. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forevermore. Amen. First reading is from Isaiah, chapter 7, 10 to 14. Again the Lord spoke to Ahab, saying, Ask a sign of the Lord your God. Let it be deep as shale or high as heaven. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, and I will not put the Lord to the test. Then Isaiah said, Hear then, O house of David, is it too little for you to weary mortals that you weary my God also? Therefore the Lord himself will give you a son. Look, the young woman is with child, and shall bear a son, and shall name him Emmanuel. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people, thanks be to God. Let us worship God with the words from Psalm 45. My heart is stirring with a noble song. Let me recite what I have fashioned for the king. My tongue shall be the pen of a skilled writer. You are the fairest of men. Grace flows from your lips, because God has blessed you forever. Strap your sword upon your thigh, O mighty warrior, in your pride and in your majesty. Ride out and conquer in the cause of truth, and for the sake of justice. Your right hand will show you marvellous things. Your arrows are very sharp, O mighty warrior. Peoples are falling at your feet, and the king's enemies are losing heart. Your throne, O God, endures for ever and ever. Scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. You love righteousness and hate iniquity. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. All your garments are fragrant with myrrh, aloes, and calcia, and the music of strings from ivory palaces makes you glad. King's daughters stand among the ladies of the court. On your right hand is the queen, adorned with the gold of Ophir. 
hero door. Consider and listen closely. Forget your people and your father's house. The king will have pleasure in your beauty. He is your master, therefore do him honour. The people of Tyre are here with a gift, and rich among the people seek your favour. O oh, glorious is the princess as she enters. Her gown is cloth of gold. In embroidered apparel she is brought to the king. After her, the bridesmaids follow in procession. With joy and gladness they are brought, and enter into the palace of the king. In place of fathers, O king, you shall have sons. You shall make them princes over all the earth. I will make your name to be remembered from one generation to another. Therefore, nations will praise you forever and ever. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The second reading is from Luke. Chapter 1, verses 26 to 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Now let us worship with the words of the Magnificat, the Song of Mary. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. For he has looked with favour on his lowly hand, sir. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things me and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent empty away. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, 
for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our forefathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Let us pray. Kiri eleison, Lord have mercy. Christi eleison, Christ have mercy. Kiri eleison, Lord have mercy. Let us pray for the church and the world and give thanks for God's good grace. We give thanks for the grace that lies within each of us and for the times that we feel it <coughs> and respond. <coughs> 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 Let us pray for the church and the world and give thanks for God's good grace. We give thanks for the grace that lies within each of us and for the times that we feel it and respond, even in the smallest way. And we remember all from whom it has shone out and inspired. Not only the obviously courageous, but also those positive people who gave steady, sacrificial support. We pray for all who are giving this courage and sacrifice to refugees from Ukraine and all over the world. And we pray for world leaders who are working hard to bring peace. Bless Elizabeth, our Queen, give wisdom to all in authority and direct this and every nation to the ways of justice and of peace that all people may honour one another and seek the common good. Inspire Christians of all denominations and nations to work together and support each other in times of danger, financial constraints, and when life for congregations and the local population is a struggle. And be with us, our family, and friends, that we may all serve Christ in one another and love as he loves us. Comfort, heal, and support all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. We remember those who have died peacefully at home, in hospital, through famine or war. Grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. 
Lord, create with this beautiful world and all who live in it. In your mercy, hear our prayer. And now, in uniting our voices and prayers into one, we pray as our Saviour taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O God, it is your will to hold both heaven and earth in a single peace. Let the design of your great love shine on the waste of our wrath and sorrow of our violence and rebellion, and give peace to your church, peace among nations, peace in our homes, and peace in our hearts, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now say together the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.